Coming up, it's sometimes difficult to separate the pandemic's impact on the economy from that of Brexit. But we know from reports by investment banking giant Goldman Sachs and the Bank of England itself that Brexit has been costing the UK economy between £6 and £800 million each week and there is increasingly nowhere to hide for the Brexit zealots. When further Brexit regulations come into force from 1st of October, the weekly cost of Brexit will rise even further. In this video, we look at the top five Brexit problems facing Boris Johnson's Westminster cabal this autumn. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. At number five, UK import controls to come into effect. Brexit was in theory all about taking back control. But as of today, Saturday the 11th of September 2021, the UK has yet to impose full controls on EU imports. These controls were meant to have been put in place some time ago, but the Tory government postponed implementation because businesses hadn't had time to prepare for the massive administrative storm caused by Johnson's terrible Brexit deal. Or to use the government's phrase, businesses needed more time to adapt to new processes and requirements. Grace periods are ending, so more Brexit necessitated admin will be phased in between 1st of October and 1st of March 2022 when checks begin on live animals imported from the EU. But there won't be enough qualified vets to carry out these checks. British meat eaters have always relied on a steady stream of EU vets to monitor slaughterhouses and the transportation of live animals. And that stream has been going in the opposite direction since Brexit. Nearly all British vets go into the field to help animals live a healthy life. They don't want jobs that enable the mass live transportation and slaughter of animals. Good job that veganism is catching on really. Some Russian wag messaged me on Twitter with an adapted Soviet era joke. He said, what's a hundred yards long and eats cabbage? Answer, a British meat queue. <laughs> At number four, a shortage of lorry drivers. Yes, there is a shortage of HGV drivers across Europe because training during COVID was disrupted. But added to that, in the UK last year, 14,000 HGV drivers returned to their homes on the continent and only 600 have returned. The EU's gain, an hour loss. Anyone not in denial will have seen the empty supermarket shelves and the long list of out of stock or substituted items in their online shop. Not surprising with an estimated 100,000 driver vacancies in the freight transport industry. And with the UK's post-Brexit immigration rules, it's difficult for new drivers from Europe to come to work in the UK as easily as before. The xenophobic Johnson government has rejected the idea of granting European drivers temporary visas. But let's face it, that's probably of no consequence. If you were a European lorry driver, would it be an attractive proposition for you to work on this Brexit voting hostile plague infested island under sufferance on a temporary visa to be kicked out as soon as you weren't needed anymore? What the Tories have done is relax restrictions on British driver hours and suggested to businesses that they hire UK based drivers who obviously don't exist as the Road Haulage Association had to explain to the imbeciles in the cabinet, pointing out the time it takes to recruit and test new drivers. They warned that a chronic shortage of lorry drivers in the UK will disrupt supplies for some time to come and that the UK's departure from the EU was a major factor. At number three, labour shortages in other industries. For years, the UK economy has been reliant on a supply of labour from other EU countries, doing jobs that the native Brits don't want to do. And most of these EU workers are no longer able to come here once freedom of movement rights were removed. This has particularly impacted the care sector, agriculture, the construction industry and hospitality. Tim Martin of Weatherspoons is having a right old moan about it, saying it's not the Brexit he voted for. But he's not the only one. The National Farmers Union is asking the government to review the impact of the ending of free movement as crops are being left to rot in the fields. And the British food and drink sector has asked the UK government to relax post-Brexit immigration rules as it claims that labour shortages are reaching breaking point. There's part of me that thinks, well, actually, this is great news for British workers because supply and demand should lead to increased wages in the lowest paid sectors. But the labour pool is so limited 
Raising wages isn't having the desired effect for employers, and they're just adding to production costs and price inflation for all of us. What numpty of a Prime Minister would have pushed ahead with Brexit right in the middle of a global pandemic? It's so obvious that blind dogmatism trumped common sense. At number two, Northern Ireland. You can only kick the can down the road so far. The incompetent, inexperienced and ignorant buffoon David Lordy Frost still wants to renegotiate the Northern Ireland Protocol that him and his Lord and Master Boris Johnson willingly signed up to. In fact, Johnson was the joint architect of the agreement. The UK has unilaterally postponed implementing the agreed rules on goods sent from Britain to Northern Ireland. This is a serious breach of our agreement with the EU in what the government might claim as a limited and specific way. But interestingly, the EU haven't challenged the decision in court, despite their tabloid press reputation as being revengeful and petty. They've merely put on record that they will not agree to a renegotiation of the protocol and stating that they are ready to engage with Johnson's government to seek solutions. The EU knows something that neither Johnson nor Frost choose to understand, that the changes Johnson and Frost want to the agreed protocol would lead to further trade disruption at the Irish border and could revive tensions in Northern Ireland and a potential return to the troubles that were once thought to be firmly in the past. And at number one, Brexit red tapes further impact on trade. We've already seen many companies cease imports and exports between the UK and EU post-Brexit. My friend Michael Lambert has had to wind up his souvenir trading company as a direct result of Brexit non-tariff barriers. And if you haven't seen Michael's passionate and articulate YouTube videos on Brexit, please do check them out. Brexit red tape is going to get a lot worse as grace periods expire. Already, the boss of Marks & Spencer's, Steve Rowe, has been complaining that each lorry load of goods crossing the channel has to have literally hundreds of pages of paperwork before it's allowed through. And a lot of that is because of UK-imposed procedures and restrictions. Because of the ongoing delays and costs arising from Brexit red tape, the government has kicked another can down the road in the form of the new, much-heralded British product safety mark, which was meant to replace the old CE mark EU certification. In practice, of course, it just doubles the load on manufacturers, because to sell their goods in the EU, they will need both the CE mark plus the new British safety mark. The government has quietly booted that idea into the long grass until at least 2023. Leading think tank the Institute for Government has carried out rigorous research and analysis and determined that the last-minute EU-UK trade deal negotiated by Boris Johnson may avoid tariffs and quotas but it does little to streamline border processes, with 75% of international traders reporting that the Brexit trade deal had negatively impacted their business. With the ending of Brexit grace periods, this figure can only rise. Another leading think tank, Carnegie Europe, reckons that the UK chose Brexit without comprehending the full consequences of its decision. And it's clear to me, that those consequences are only going to get worse. Welcome to the Brexit, sir. I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs>